Yeah, yeah, it's working now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all good now. Okay, thank you. Sorry. All good, all good. Okay. So... All right, so... Next one is at what stage a GST will be applied to the property. So there could be a four type of transaction happening in related to the property. And then some could be a GST related, some could be a GST free, or there could be a mixture of both. So in the first one, when we're looking at a taxable supply, you are liable for a GST on the sale and claim GST credit for anything purchased. For example, you built a new house, you want to sell a new house, you are required to pay a GST on that transaction. And when you, whatever fees you paid or you paid to the builder for the construction, you are able to get that credit back while you lodge your GST return to the ATO. Then there can be a GST free transaction where you are not liable for GST on the sale but you can claim GST credits for anything purchased or imported to make the sale. So these are the normal GST rules where some of your sales could be a GST free, um, say medical supplies, or if, you, if there is a going concern business purchase where you can, you are not required to pay the GST on the sale, but you would be able to claim a GST. For example, if you paid a commission to the agent for the sale of the business, uh, you can claim the GST on that. That uh, Then there could be a input text GST. You are not liable for GST on the sale and you cannot claim the GST in this scenario. So for example, you, you purchased any existing residential premises and then you sale, sold it later on. In this scenario, like a normal buy, buying and selling of any property, you are not required for GST. GST is not involved in this scenario. Uh, it, there could be a combination of any of the above as well. So part of the part of the sale could be GST, and part of the sale could be GST free. All right. So now we sort of in a in a real scenario where someone is developing a property and selling it a new residential premises if you are a supplier and build a new residential premises for sale you are liable for sale gst on the sale you can claim the gst credit on your construction costs and any purchase you make related to the sale you can't claim gst credit for gst included in the sale price when you are using a margin scheme and when supplier is not registered for GST. So if the supplier is not GST registered and they have provided you some services, then obviously you cannot claim the GST because their tax invoice is not GST inclusive. All right. So now GST and the margin scheme. So basically what is margin scheme? Um, margin scheme is a way of working out the GST you must pay when you sell property as part of your business. You can only apply margin scheme of the, on the sale of the property is taxable. As a seller, you must have made a written agreement. It is very important that if you are using a margin scheme while you are buying or while you are selling a property, you must have a written agreement with the purchaser before the settlement date to sell the property under the margin scheme. If it's in not written or you only have an intention, then ATO will consider it not inclusive of margin scheme. Then you must be liable for paying more GST rather than what it will be calculated based on the margin scheme. If you purchase a property where the margin scheme was applied on the sale, you cannot claim a GST credit for the sale included in the purchase price. So you bought a property which where the seller has used a margin scheme, you as a buyer cannot claim a GST credit because it's a specific law of GST where the existing party has used the margin scheme. You as a buyer cannot use the margin scheme and cannot claim the GST on that. If you were charged the full rate of GST when you originally purchased the property, the margin scheme can't be used in selling the property. 
generally if you were charged the full rate of gst when you purchased a property as part of your business you would have claimed the gst back in this scenario there could be a two builders both of them are gst registered so for example one builder is selling a property or a land to another builder where both of them are gst registered both of the first builder the seller is charging the gst and the buyer can claim the gst and then in this scenario margin scheme cannot be used okay so what are the requirement to use the margin scheme what are the eligibilities to use the margin scheme if you sell property as part of your business and you are registered for gst you may be able to use the margin scheme to work out how much gst you must pay you cannot use the margin scheme if when you first purchase the property the sale to you was fully taxable and the margin scheme was not used so this is related to the previous slide where one builder is selling to another builder both of them are fully gst registered one is charging a gst another one is claiming a gst in this scenario margin scheme cannot be used okay generally if the previous owner of the property was not eligible to use the margin scheme you will also not be able to use the margin scheme you must work out your eligibility to use margin scheme before you sell the property so it's it's the same you assess your eligibility if you are able to use the margin scheme then you convey your message to the con conveyancer and all the contract it should be in written it should be on your sale of contract that you your intention is to use the margin scheme okay then there are some conditions for the eligibility eligibility to use the margin scheme depends on when you bought the property and when you are selling the property your eligibility can be affected by the eligibility of the person from whom you bought the property so it depends on the vendor who is selling you the property and then you are selling that same property after a while your eligibility to use margin scheme will depend on what what's your arrangement with the vendor when you originally purchased the property for yourself there are some changes along the way um, throughout 2005 to 2008 so if if there is any property related to those dates then we will have to go through the the changes and whatever the amendments were made at that time and then we have to assess whether you are eligible or you are not eligible for that so those amendments may affect your eligibility to use the margin scheme where property has been purchased or acquired either from so if someone inherited the property or it, it and in an associate if it's a fellow group member of the gst if a fellow participant in a joint venture so if two person as persons are doing a joint venture and one is selling to another one you cannot claim the margin scheme in in that scenario a gst free sale either as part of a going concern or a farmland say someone bought a acres of land and then try to subdivide and sell that at that time we have to assess again assess the margin scheme eligibility to see whether the seller was eligible to use the use the margin scheme or not okay so if none of the amendments so again those are dated back to 2005 and 2008 if none of the amendments affect your purchase or acquisition of the land you are eligible to use the margin scheme if you purchased the property before july 2000 at that time the gst law law was introduced in australia um then again we have to assess the eligibility based on the specific dates of the vendor and the purchaser uh, if you purchase the property after 1st of july and and one of the following applies to the seller so again um we have to stress on this fact that written agreement is is a must to use the margin scheme um this is a general um sale of contract used in victoria and there is a specific column this column where the red arrow is it must be there must be a margin scheme word inserted there if you are intending to use the margin scheme 
simply sending an email or confirming with the purchaser or the seller that you want to use the, a margin scheme won't be enough. You are required to have that in, in the writing on, on the contract actually. Dalinder ji, we, we've just received a uh, question which I think rather than answer later is worth answering yes, Certainly, now. certainly. It is, uh, people uh, actually are a bit confused about what exactly does the margin scheme mean? What is the margin scheme? Um, I think we leave it to the end. Once we complete, I think that question will be self-answered. But if there is still any confusion, I'm happy to address that. Okay. Okay. Okay, then there are different methods that can be used to work out the margin. Um, it again depends on, on the date when the property was purchased and what you are trying to do at around what dates. There are two methods used, the consideration method and the valuation method. Uh, but if if it's if everything is happening after first of July, then anyway, regardless, you cannot use the valuation method. You have to use the consideration method. Consideration means what you have actually paid for the property, rather than valuing the property at any given point of time uh, through the real estate agent or through the professional valuer. That what is the value of the property? So consideration method is is what. Uh, you supposed to be using after 1st of July 2000. All right, so what is consideration method? Um, I have just given you a brief, uh, but I can run it through. Okay, you can use the consideration method to calculate the GST payable under the margin scheme, regardless of when you, when you purchase the property you are selling using the consideration method. Okay, so now I'm answering that question. So what is the margin? So basically margin is the difference between the property's selling price and the original purchase price. That is the sale price less the purchase price equal the margin. So basically say someone bought a land for 100,000 and then they sold the property for 250. So 150 is the margin basically. I'll, I have uh, examples in coming slides where we will elaborate on this point in more detail. So the sale price must include any settlement adjustment contained within the sale contract. So if there are, are any, any adjustment, for example, those water adjustment or the rates adjustment, they should also be considered while calculating the margin scheme. Okay, general normal costs are like cost of developing the property, the legal fees, any options you purchase, the stamp duty, and any other related purchase expenses. Okay, so this is an example where Bob has is a GST registered builder. He purchased a block of land for 150 from the vendor who was not registered for GST. So someone was holding a block, Bob the builder has purchased that block for 150. Bob paid the convincing fees, stamp duty, and any other purchase costs related to the land. Bob later constructed a house on the land and sold the house and land for 315. Bob chose to use the margin scheme to work out the GST on the sale. The margin of the sale of the house and land package is 165 which is 315 minus 150. For example, the sale price of the property minus the purchase of the property. Okay, now the GST Bob must pay on the margin of the sale is 15,000, which is 1 11th of the 165. You may see that he's not paying the GST on the full, full 315. He's only paying GST on the margin, which is a difference of the sale price of the constructed property minus the purchase of the land. And then obviously whatever he is paid for the construction, he would be able to claim the GST on the construction or any other fees that he has paid, which might have a GST and he can claim the GST back on that scenarios. So. Okay, so calculating the margin. Your margin is generally the difference between the sale price and one of the following, the amount you paid for the property, which is 
which is in the last example was 150 and that's called the consideration that you have paid for the property. The value of the property, again, uh, if it, the property is purchased after July 2000, then you cannot use the valuation method. Okay, so your margin is not, the margin, unlike any accounting profit, so as I addressed in the previous slide, the margin is not the total sale price and your costs. The margin is calculated between the value of the property and the total sale price. Okay. All right, so there is an, another example. So where John is a registered GST and carrying on an enterprise for property developments. He buy a vacate land from Jenny who is not registered for GST for 100,000 in 2007. John improves the property with roads and other services and sell, sells it to George for 210,000 in October 2018. 2008. Thus, the margin will be 210,000 minus the 100,000, which equates to 110,000. John must pay GST one eleventh of the margin, that is 10,000. Again, he is not paying GST on 210,000. He is paying GST only on the margin, which is a difference between the sale price and the purchase price. Okay, there have been recent law change in 2018. So instead of paying the full contract price to the GST register supplier, for example, vendor selling the property at settlement, a purchaser is now required to withhold an amount from the contract price and pay the amount directly to the ATO. The amount a purchaser must withhold and remit to the ATO is 1 11th of the contract price which in, in this case, if it's a fully taxable, fully GST supply. Otherwise, generally, uh, your convincer will suggest to you to withhold 7%, which is contract price, the mar if there is a margin scheme applies, or 10% of the GST exclusive market value of the supplies for suppliers between the associates for a price less than GST inclusive market value. This law change does not affect the supplier's obligation to lodge the GST return to the ATO through the BAS. So basically this law was introduced by the ATO because in the past a lot of builders were will get, get the amount paid from the purchaser and then liquidate their company. Once they liquidated that, that company, ATO was not able to recover the GST, GST on those, those purchase and sales and ATO made it mandatory in 2018 that a purchaser should withhold the amount based on the scenario, whether it's a fully taxable supply or a margin scheme, and then remit it directly to the ATO. Okay, so withholding, I'll, I'll go through this uh, example. Uh, Buildco developed a house on land they acquired for 228,000. Then they found a buyer, Tom, who enters into a contract for the purchase of the new house to buy it from Buildco for 800,000. They agreed in writing to use the margin scheme. Okay, this information enables Tom's convincer to complete the GST property settlement withholding notification. It's a bit more technical. We accountant will advise our clients through the process and we will do the lodgement, but there are some reference numbers where buyer and seller will exchange the information and the convincer will prepare those documents in with the, with the accountant and then the documents will be lodged so that it, the transaction and the withholding of GST can be traced through the ATO. Um, originally, when they started this withholding requirement back in 2018, as tax agent, we did not have the facility to see those transactions. And it was almost taking two to three months for ATO to track those transactions and then allocate the credits related to the clients but now they have the have an online feature where as a registered tax agents 
we can see that those transaction in your ATO portfolio to see when the passes are lodged and those numbers are important to track the transactions that has happened in your account. Okay, so the, it could be a different calculation for a seller and a buyer when they are using a margin scheme. So I'll continue with the same example. Build cost margin scheme cost base is 228,000. GST margin is calculated as the new house's sale price less the amount paid for acquiring the property. So they sold the property for 800,000. Their cost was 228,000 to purchase the land. The difference is 572,000. The GST liability in this case is 52,000, which is one eleventh of the margin, which is $572,000. This GST liability equates to a roughly around 6.5% of the 800,000 purchase. Now, Buildco lodges their, their BAS, including the margin of 572. Again, this is a bit technical where the accountants will address uh, generally when you are completing a pass return, there is a label called G1 um, that will have that amount going in there. And 1A is the credit of the GST that you are claiming back from the ATO, which is 52,000, which is 1 11th of the 572,000. Okay, the credit amount of 56,000 withheld and remitted by Tom. So when they were doing the transaction, Tom's convincer, who is the buyer, they have withheld $56,000 out of the 800,000 and the remaining was paid to, to the build and co. They directly remitted that 56,000 to the ATO. When Build and Co. lodged their tax return, according to their calculation, they're supposed to be paying 52,000 GST. However, 56,000 was withheld. Now, what they when they lodged the GST to the ATO, uh, transactions are matched with the ATO, then they were eligible for that 4,000 refund, which is the difference between the actual GST they're supposed to be paying and what has been withheld by the conveyancer of the buyer. All right, so what are the pros and cons of margin scheme? The upside of the margin scheme is, of course, that you are paying GST, which is a, which is a reduced because you are only paying on the margin scheme. The downside is that purchaser cannot claim an input tax credit. This means if, if a mom and dad buyer buys a property from the builder, um, they are not registered for GST. They cannot claim the GST because they are just buying a residential property to live in. However, it's beneficial for the builder. So a developer sells a new residential unit. A project builds sell unit and land packages or land is sold to an unregistered purchaser. Unregistered purchaser is the person who is not required to register for the GST. It also means that a developer could consider using the margin scheme on sale to a purchaser who cannot claim input tax credit in any event, uh, unregistered purchaser, which is a mom and dad purchaser. Using the normal method of calculation, GST on sales to register purchases who can claim the GST back as an input tax credit. All right, so here is a comparative example where you are using a margin scheme and then you are not able to use the margin scheme. So you purchased the old property or a land for 100,000. You've done a construction construction for 110,000 and then you sold the property for 255,000. If you are using a margin scheme, then you are pay, your GST in sales is $14,000. But if you are not able to use the margin scheme where you are paying a GST on the full amount of the sale, then your GST is $23,000. Then obviously you can claim the GST on, on any, any cost you had, which is in our scenario, we had 110,000 construction cost. You can claim that 10,000 back. 
in both scenario, then the net GST payable, if you have used the margin scheme, then you are able, you are only paying $4,000. But if you haven't used the margin scheme or if you are not eligible to use the margin scheme, then you are paying $13,000. So the difference is $9,000. That's the, basically the saving for you um, if you have constructed the, the new residential property and then you have sold that property. Um, so basically you you consulted your accountants, advisors or conveyancer beforehand and you knew about the margin scheme, then potentially you can land a saving of $10,000 for a sale of $255,000. Okay, so record keeping in this scenario is very important because ATO, sometime we have seen ATO would come back after two, three years after the sale of the property and they want to audit whether you have correctly applied a margin scheme or you haven't used that, then at that point, it's better you keep all your documentation in checks, all your sales and purchase contract, the settlement statements, details of how you worked out margin scheme. Sometimes they will request your advisor accountant to provide a calculation of the margin scheme. This is again very important that the agreement is in writing on sale of contract and then if you are using a valuation method then then you have an approved valuation which is considered by the ATU. All right, I think we are done. It was a quick session. I'm happy to take um, any question you guys may have. Jatinderji, I'll start with a question which I think will uh, take care of a lot of questions that people might yes, have. Yes, certainly, uh, certainly. Especially because there'll be a lot of uh, mom and dad investors who obviously yeah. uh, are not very clear about how much the scheme applies to them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, just asking on everyone's behalf, yeah. uh, when it comes to margin scheme, yeah, are we saying that? If someone is looking to buy an investment property or do a land and construction as an investment property, yeah. then in order to be eligible for a margin scheme, rather than buy the property in their individual names, they should have some sort of a company structure or a trust structure with company trustees that would help them get the margin scheme or is there something more? No, no. So margin scheme is, it can be used in, in any structure. You don't have to have a, any particular structure like a company or a trust. It can be used by individual as well. Um, margin scheme, basically it comes back to the eligibility. Say I go and buy a land where I haven't paid any GST or, or I buy an old property, which I demolish and then construct a new, new property and sell it. It's all under my individual name. So now because I constructed a new property and immediately selling that property, the, they will consider my intention. So basically when I bought the property, my intention was to make a profit. So I bought an old property within a very reasonable time, demolished it, got planning and permit for the new one, constructed, sold it. At that time, because the original property I bought did not have any GST because I only bought it from, again, a mom and dad seller. Um, when I'm selling new property would attract a GST. At that point, I can use the margin scheme to give me a saving um, similar to this kind of example where you could potentially say save part of the GST rather than paying the full amount to the GST you are only paying um, on the margin. So structure is not important, basically. It's more of whatever structure you are using, um, the eligibility of when you are buying and when you are selling, that's what's important. Okay, so do you or do you not have to be GST registered yourself to be able to claim the margin scheme when you are selling a property in, in this instance? So when you are selling a new property with the intention of making a profit, ATO will consider you as running an enterprise. It's, it, at that point, ATO, ATO will want you to register. So even though you are not registered, but then you will be required to register. Sometimes what happens is people don't consider 
all this beforehand and when they sell the property um, it you will want their share of gst but then they miss out of, on using this kind of scheme which is which is like a legal scheme by the ato um, and they have to pay gst on the full amount and even though they are registering for gst at a later stage generally all the builders builders will be gst registered and they will be providing you tax invoice so you will be still able to claim the gst on your construction costs or any other advisor cost you may have but you will miss on on using the margin scheme if you are if you are just selling the property without getting a proper advice beforehand okay so if i get it right then uh you buy a property and you sell it yeah as long as at some point even if you are an individual investor without a company structure or anything yeah yeah you register yourself for gst and an avian at some point and you may be eligible to use the margin scheme is that correct yes yes but you need to make sure when you originally bought the property are you meeting the margin margin scheme eligibilities mm -hmm. uh, that's that's very important okay if, so, for, so that's... for your eligibility to use margin scheme at later stage when you are buying that's very important what what sort of transaction you been through okay so uh, and and also to, just to get this right so yeah sure this is for a short term you know profit sort of situation yeah it, it, it is if someone <clears throat> bought constructed it and then uh, kept the property for say five years on a on a rental basis um then after five years the the property is not considered new by the ato then you don't need to pay gst after five years for example but if you if you bought it you build it you sold it within a say six six month or one year's time then the new property sale will be considered a, a venture where you will be paying gst okay okay i've got a few questions yeah, sure. um from people let me just go go through them one by one yeah, so sure. first one um uh, when should one ask our accountant about the margin scheme before building the house or before the sale after construction so i think the first first step will be when you originally buying a property say you may have already bought a property without having any intention of development you bought a old property lived there or you rented it for a few years now after say 5 to 10 years time you think oh, i should develop it property whether it's a single development or a multi development and then you sell it so basically when you are in a process of selling then you should consider contact your advisor to see whether you are eligible to use the margin scheme they will assess your eligibility and if you are then before you sign the contract you make that arrangement in writing to your purchaser and then you can take advantage of the margin scheme sure um the next question is if one owns the land only mm -hmm. let's say settled in uh, 2019 on individual name no avian yeah. or acn yeah and and only selling it after constructing mm -hmm. uh let's say uh it, it, sometime this year so after a couple of years yeah is the gst applicable on the profit of the house only negating the land price uh if you are able to use the margin scheme then then yes you are paying the gst only on the difference but again um there are generally two methods for taxation purposes they use one is called a revenue method and one is a uh, on a capital account so if it's on a capital account generally you will pay the capital gain and if you have held the asset for more than 12 months then you get a 50 percent discount say you bought a property for hundred dollars kept it for a couple of years then you sold it for 200 you made a hundred dollar profit rather than paying a tax on 100 dollar you are only paying a tax on 50 dollar because you get a 50 percent discount on your capital gain if you held the property for more than 12 months so in this scenario the question you ask me um so the land is acquired in 2019 and the vacate land is sitting there so even now you know in the past uh, um, you were able to claim the 
interest expenses where you are holding a land with the intention of building it but from this year july onwards you are not able to claim those interest expenses unless or until you have a concrete plan or a building contract signed where, where you are definitely building a property and either selling it or renting it straight away. But if you are holding the land for a few years um, and your intention is not clear, then you are not able to even claim the interest expenses moving forward in your tax return. Uh, the next question is, what's the reasonable time within which GST applied if you buy an old house and knock it down to rebuild a new house for example, say we want to one to two years. So again, if if you are selling within five years, then it's still considered as a new residential premises. And if it's considered a new residential premises and your intention is again to make a profit, then there will be a GST applicable in this scenario. So it's five five years is the key. Okay. Uh, the next one is. Can this scheme be used for normal house and land packages? Yes, it can be used. Again, I mean, you have to assess the eligibility while buying and selling, but it can be used, yes. Okay. Uh, next one is, if, if I buy a block of land, let's say for 300,000 and sell the land for 350 within a year of buying, will I be liable to pay GST? Uh, you may be, but if it's one-off transaction, you bought it and then you are selling the land, um, and you held it for say more than 12 months, you might get away with not paying the GST in this scenario because it will be considered as holding a land on a capital account where you are just holding the land for appreciation purposes rather than buying a land and then selling it with the intention of profit within a very short period of time. So, so that is if you, uh, you know more than 12 months, but what if the land is sold in less than 12 months? Um, then definitely there'll be a GST. Okay. <clears throat> that was the last of the questions I can see. If there are any other questions, I would request everyone to please type in. Or, or just un unmute yourself and ask the yeah, question. Yeah, you can ask on the, on the mic, please. Yeah, or if you have any other question, related to any other thing you can email me or call me uh, on this number and i'm happy, happy to have a chat in private hello uh, Kapil, can you hear me yes yes, yes Kapil, how are you hi good how are you uh, good, just a you. quick question so yeah. from a from a benefits kind of perspective yeah you reckon that if you are looking to kind of Chain properties yeah, every two yeah. to three years yeah, by yeah. by buying land and and building it and making a small profit of twenty thirty thousand yeah then would you reckon it's better that you register for GST and the margin scheme and you, and you consider yourself that way and and put that structure in place because then at least you get the benefit of what what your recommendation would be in if, that in that scenario if, if if that's what you are doing that you are continuously buying a land and building and selling it straight away, then you will definitely be considered as in a business, in, in business of constructing and selling the property with the intention of profit. Um, mm -hmm. Then it's not sort of your choice whether you do it or not. You will mm -hmm. have to register for GST. Okay, fair enough. But like, like if if you do once off, that's okay. You can get away with Look, it. Look, if it's one off in that. ten years' time, then you yeah. may get yeah. away with it. But yeah. if your whole intention is to continuously doing it, then you yeah. are required to do that. And and that's like because obviously, by the time you buy the land, you settle it, and by the time you can start it, if it's like two to three years, you just it's better off doing it that way, and yeah. then you get the benefits as well. Yes, okay. yes, so yeah. No, make, makes sense. Okay, and and with regards to old properties, like you mentioned. If you buy it and if you rented it for like good, let's say six, seven years, and then you construct it and live in it for another five years, are you considered? Like, no, then you, are, then, then you are not in a business of constructing ah, okay. and selling properties. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. Then it's just incidental that after five years, when you sold, you made a profit. 
and okay, um, then you are not required to GS, uh, register for GST. Uh, bear in mind, you cannot uh, also claim GST <laughs> on your construction costs. So it will be both way. If you are registered for GST, then you are paying a GST on your sales, as well as mm -hmm. are able to claim GST on your construction and any other associated costs you may have. Okay, and uh, like, does it apply to renovation or not? If it's a substantial renovation, which means you are putting a new new room or you totally replaced the kitchen, bathroom, and the floor, then substantial mm -hmm. renovation is also considered um, as a construction, and then there will be GST applicable as well. Okay, so when you buy an old property and renovate it and churn it around, sell it, then you can take the benefit of, of margin scheme yes. or, or register for okay. Yeah, Fair yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No problem, thanks. Jarinder ji, I have a question in continuation to the previous one that someone asked. So, you know, how, how we were asking if the land is sold within 12 months, uh, yeah. will GST be applicable? Yeah. Uh, in continuation of that, so the question is, will I be able to claim bank loan interest exemption while filing a tax return in that case? Okay, so as per the previous law, if you are were holding a land which you had a plan to construct and, and rent it, you were generally able to claim that interest on a year-to-year -year basis. Say you had land last year, the total interest you paid is $5,000. You were able to claim straight away in the same financial year. And because you, there is no income, you pretty much make a loss of that $5,000. And if your other income was about $55,000, then that 5,000 will give you a relief of that 5,000. You are only paying tax on $50,000, which is negative gearing basically in, in any other scenario. But now from last year, what has happened is from 1st of July, you are not able to claim that interest straight away within that financial year. However, you can crystallize that interest expenses and then when you are selling, then you can claim it as a cost cost to you holding that land and you would be able to, to, to pay the tax on only on difference. As an example, you bought a land for 50,000, you kept it for two years where you paid say 5,000 interest in two years, and then you sold it for $70,000. So your original cost is 50,000 plus your holding cost, which is interest, and there may be any other costs. Uh, so 55, you sold it for 70, you made a 15,000 profit. And then that 15 mm -hmm. further gets you a 50% CGT discount if it's, considered on a capital account, not on a revenue account. Uh, you are only paying tax on 75,000 based on any other income you may have in that financial year on your marginal rate of tax. Cool. That makes sense? Um, I guess. Um, does anyone have any other questions that they want to ask? Uh, yeah, hi, uh, this is Rohit. Uh, so uh, how do we differentiate between revenue account and what was the other one? Capital, capital account. account. So basically revenue and capital means if you bought a property and you kept it for say five years time, rented it, and then you sold it for five years time, that property is considered on a capital account where you are holding an asset for the benefit of appreciation or earning a rental income. So mm -hmm. then whatever the profit you make after five years, um, that will be reduced by 50% and then you are paying tax only on a 50%. In other scenario, you bought a property and then after six months, you uh, you getting a profit, you sold it straight away. Because you are selling it straight away and the whole idea of buying that property was to make a quick profit, then it will be considered on a revenue account, which is normal sort of a profit and loss. What was your cost? How much you sold for plus and minus and then whatever left is you will be paying tax on that so it's it's the intention and the time frame will be important to consider whether it's on a revenue account or whether it's on a capital account so with regards to the property 
um, you you bought a property and straight away demolished, build a new house and sold it, that'll be on a revenue account. But if you bought a property, rented it for a few years, knocked it off, built a new house, then rented the new house and then sold in say a few years time, that will be considered on a capital account. So the timing is important there. So uh, as an individual, we don't need to uh, create these accounts ATO will consider no, no, you don't need to it's 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 the terminology that I'm using it's basically your advisor and the ATO they they will work it out when you will sit with your accountant or with me or anyone then they will be able to to make that decision to see whether it's on a revenue account or on a capital account so for example the builders who are building multiple properties in in one mm -hmm. year all their purchase and sale is on a revenue account, which means it's it's like any other business where you are buying stuff and you selling stuff, that's mm -hmm. a revenue account. But if for an individual buying a property, holding it for a few years and not kicking it down, then again, holding it a few years, that that will go on, on, on a capital account, yeah. Okay, so as, as an example, if I bought a piece of land for like, 300,000 yeah. in 2020. Yeah. Then in 2021, I built a house on it for 250,000. So total is 550. Yeah. And I sell it within 2021 for like yeah. say six, 600,000. Yeah. Okay. So in this scenario, will I pay GST as well as capital gains tax or there is only one thing applicable? No, so there will be both because new residential property will be considered um, GST there. So you will be paying GST there. And then whatever your profit is, you will be paying tax, depending on what sort of structure you have. If it's on an individual name, then it the the profit will be added back to your any other income during that financial year. And the total will be calculated the tax based on depending on which bracket tax bracket you falls in whether it's a 19 percent or whether it's a 47 percent it'll depend mm -hmm. on your total income during the year okay and for, for the gst calculation like i paid 300,000 to developer to buy the land then yep. 250,000 to builder to get it constructed yeah so total cost is 550 and yeah. i sold it for 600,000 so gst will be calculated on 550,000 or 250,000. No, so you can claim the GST back on your construction cost, which is 250. So 1 11th of the 250, you mm -hmm. will be able to claim it back. And mm -hmm. then when you are paying GST on your sales, then it will depend if you are able to use the margin scheme. I'll just go back to one of the example we had. If you have used the margin scheme, then you will be paying GST only on the margin, which is difference of your sale price and your purchase price of the land. If you are not able to use the margin scheme, say, you did not pay attention or your advisor haven't advised you beforehand and maybe after two years the ato come back knocking on your door to say look we think you have sold the property and there should be a gst payable at that time mm -hmm. because you haven't made a written agreement of using the margin scheme you might be paying gst on the full amount which then will cost you more if you look into this example um, based on your numbers, we can run that through to see what, what it could cost you. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in this scenario, buying a land, constructing constructing yeah. a house and then selling it. Yeah. So we don't depend on previous owner margin scheme eligibility, right? Because so, we bought a land, then constructed. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes if you are buying a land from a builder and if he is paying a full GST on the full price, then you are not able to use the margin scheme. But if you are buying from a, any other, you know, mom and dad seller or, mm -hmm. or a developer, then there is no GST at, at that stage. And then when you are selling the constructor property yourself, you would be able to use the margin scheme because as a seller, mm -hmm. you, okay. you are required to register for GST as you are selling a new constructor property. Okay, so in case of developer, there is no GST, but in case uh, again, like... you, you, again, you know, you have to go through the contract. There is no hard and fast rule, mm -hmm. um, but 
when you are buying a buying a land then the contract that they will give you should be saying whether there is a gst applicable on that transaction or not so mm -hmm. that's key mm -hmm. where either your accountant or your conveyancer should be able to read that to say whether there is a GST or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, mostly with developers, it's not. But if someone is buying on, say, a nomination. Nomination, so again, there, there may not be um, a GST because if some any individual has bought the land which they are not able to either settle or they are getting some profit quick profit by selling it on a nomination basis then there is no gst as well uh -huh. okay yeah yeah thank you no problem thanks and the next question is yeah uh, if i buy a ppr under corporate structure for asset protection purposes okay. as i might open a business in the future yeah for example ppr bought under a trust and company yeah would, would i need to pay cgt if i sell the ppr in five years time which was under the corporate structure? Uh, come if it's a company, definitely oh. you will be pay paying. Mm. Uh, but if it's a trust and you are the primary beneficiary, you might get away with not mm. paying the the CGT. Okay. Rohit, can you put yourself on mute, please? And the, please. Um, company definitely not but if it's a trust and he's the uh, individual is the primary beneficiary then they might get away with not paying not paying the any cgt because it's exempt under the ppr rule okay uh yeah. next question is is there any benefit to have a property under the revenue account or better to have it as a capital account um, it's it's not just the decision that whether you are keeping a property on a revenue or um, or a capital account, it will depend on the time frame and the intention of you buying a property and then when you are selling it. If you have sold it, say after five years, then it's automatically on a capital account. But if you are selling within a one year or a short time frame, then it will be on a revenue account. And again, oh. it depends on the frequency, how frequent, how frequently you are doing those transaction and whether you are considered in a business of buying and selling the properties, whether you are constructing or you, you buying and renovating and then selling those properties. Uh, sorry, quick one, uh, Jatanda. Uh, is that five year period uh, for the capital does that applicable uh, to the uh, old properties? Even if you buy an old property, hold it for uh, two years, sell it, uh, does it fall under capital? Or... No, no. So if you bought a property today and rented it for two years, after two years you sold that property, then by default it's on a capital account and you will get the benefit of 50% CGT discount and uh, you are not required to pay GST on that transaction as well. Okay. But if you are renovating or if you are constructing and selling it straight away, not renting it, or maybe you are renting it for a few months while you are while you are uh, advertising it for the sale, then you, you will be eligible or required to pay the GST as well as it will be considered on a revenue account. All right, perfect. Yeah, no worries, thanks. Um, any other questions, guys? Yeah, it looks like there aren't any. No worries. So on that note, uh, I have. Oh, I yeah, have sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, if I consider uh, like buying, building a land, uh, constructing. Yeah. Keeping it for five years on rental and yeah. then sell it for sell it after five years. Yeah. And I do it every year, like five every five property. years. No, every five year I sell, uh, sell that property, and every year I'm constructing a new one. Yeah, yeah, understand. Yeah. So will that come under this GST? No, 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 because you you are keeping every single property for five years. Okay. It, that's right, right? You you. 
you built one property, rented it for five years. Next year, you again built another property. That one is rented for five years, right? On, yes. So it's just like a five-year cycle for all of your properties. For every property, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Then you are not uh, required to register or pay for GST and... Uh, it will be on a capital account when you are calculating the the profit on the sale of the property as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Thank you. Anita, yes, to answer your question, we will be putting the recording of the presentation on our YouTube channel and I'll send the link to everyone. Um, I think that's it for all the questions. Sure. Um, Thank you very much, Jitendraji, for your time no and problem. for thank all you. your answers to the questions. And thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Uh, have a lovely weekend. Uh, Maddie, I'll send you the link once I upload it. It's it's the Accelerate Financial uh, YouTube channel, but I'll send you the link separately. Okay, all guys, right. thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Have a good one. Thank yes. you. Thanks, Subit. Thanks, Jitendra. Thank you. Thank you.